Hi, I'm Brady Ambler from the Nursery Golf and Country Club. I work under Brayden Rogers. Uh, this is my mechanical side for the DFS. This portion will be about reels. In this video, I will be showing you how to put a flat grind on our reels blades with our Bernard grinder. The first part will be get reel ready for grinding. Then the second part, set up reel for grinding. The third part, grinding reels. Then the last part, put the reel back together. Attention warning, reel maintenance safety for reels. There should be no loose clothing worn that could get stuck in reel while it spins. Wear safety goggles if there are sparks or any potential items that may hit your eyes. Wear dust mask if there is potentially sparks and dust in the air. There should be no jewelry or anything that could potentially get caught in the equipment when working on them. Unplug equipment when touching reels blades if there is a possibility of the reel blades spinning when working on hearing protection should be worn when there is loud equipment running or other noises. Footwear with steel toes should be on considering that there are many possibilities of heavy objects falling on your feet. Anyone with long hair should wear hair protection if it's potentially long enough that it could possibility get caught in reel. Safety is required. Ricky Green at the nursery. Part 1. Get reel ready for grinding. For us to grind the reel, I will have to take the bed bar off. To take the bed knife bar off, I will loosen the two nuts at the back with the springs. Then I will take the bolts out on each side of the reel. When I unscrewed the two bolts on each side, I made sure to keep the washers on the bolts in order of the way I took each washer off, so that when I have to screw everything back together, I will know where each washer has to go on the bolt. Now that I have those bolts unscrewed, I can now then take the bed knife bar off. Now I am just going to check the bearings in the reel to make sure they're still good. I checked the heights roller, then the shaft of the reel with the blades and then the back roller of the reel. If one side of the reel has a bad bearing, it could cause our reel's blades to get coned, making one side of the reel have more meat taken off the blades. Lucky for us, the reel's bearings are fine. What I am doing is measuring each side of the shaft of the reel's blades to make sure it's not coned, and according to the measuring tape, each side of the reel's blades are the same as the middle, which means our blades aren't coned, telling us it's past maintenance has been good. Part 2. Set up reel for grinding. Now I'm going to lock the reel in place on the Bernard grinder. Right now I am trying to center it before locking it in place. I am using the grooves in the front roller to line it up with the part that holds it in place. I make sure there's the same amount of grooves on each side of the roller where it's sticking out on the place that holds it in place and that's how I know if it's locked in the center. Also when I lock in the spacers in place I make sure it's on an angle so it will want to hold the reel in better so it'll have a lesser chance of wanting to move out of place. Now I am going to engage the rear plate against the back of the reel to hold the reel in place. Right now I'm setting up the traverse so the grinding stone will just pass each end of the reel's blades with the brackets that the traverse goes against for the traverse to change direction. I will lock the two brackets that the traverse goes against when it changes direction and then the traverse should be set. Now I will set the grinding stone so it lightly touches the reel on both sides of the blades of the reel. I use the two hand cranks on each side of the grinder to adjust how close the stone gets to the blades of the reel while spinning the reel's blades to see 
how much contact I have with the stone against the blades. Once I think each side is making the same amount of contact on each side of the reel's blades, I spin the reel's blades while moving the grindstone across the reel to make sure it's getting the good contact all the way across the reel a few more times just to make sure it's getting the light contact that we want across the reel's blades. Now I'm going to connect the flexible drive shaft that spins the reel's blades. I will make sure that it's straight going into the reel before locking it in place. Now I'm just going to spin the wrench to lock it in place, seeing that it's all straight. Part 3 Grinding Reels Before we do any grinding I will want to make sure that the traverse is locked by screwing in the knob and also make sure that the grinding stone is not touching the reel's blades before I turn the traverse on that spins the grinding stone. Now we can start grinding. I will pull up on the red button to unlock the other buttons. First I will press the button that engages the drive shaft, then the button that spins the grinding stone, and then the button that moves the traverse back and forth across the reel. Now I will watch the sparks on the reel across the reel's blades to see if it's an even all the way across the reel. And from the looks of it, it looks like the left side is not making as much contact as the right side. So it looks like we're going to have to shut it off soon. When turning off the grinder, it's very important to push the red button to stop. And you should stop it when the grindstone is not touching the reel. If you don't shut it off this way, it could cone your reel or overheat the machine and wreck your stone and reel. We adjusted the left side so it's making the same amount of contact as the right side. It's important to point out that while the stone is spinning, you should keep an eye on the control pad with the buttons to make sure it's a green light on. If it's not a green light, it's telling you that the reel's not getting enough contact across the reel's blades, or it's getting too much contact on the reel's blades. If the grinding stone is getting too much contact across the reel's blades, you should quickly adjust the hand cranks clamped clockwise so that the stone has lesser contact with the machine while it's still running. And yes, you can adjust the stone as it's running. I just choose to shut it off when fine-tuning it because I want to make sure I spin the hand crank the right way and I want to make sure that I don't take too much meat off the blades so that they have many more years to cut grass. When it comes to grinding reels with this grinder, you keep the grinder on until the reels blades are sharp as you want them to be and until it's not coned if it was coned before or until there's no more rock chips in the reels blades. One cool trick I've heard of is to shine a light on the reel as it's getting grind and you should see a white line across the blades. What you should look for with this white line on the reel is for dark spots on the reel. If you see dark spots on the reel that's telling you that there's rock chips in those spots on the blades. The more solid the white line is, the less rock chips it has, and the more true your blades will cut. In this video, it is hard to see the spots on these blades compared to doing it in front of your own eyes. Part 4. Put reel back together. Now we'll just have to put the bed bar back on the reel. Okay then, right now I am loosening the bolts that are used to tighten the bed knife closer to the reel. The reason I am doing this is so it will be easier to put the bed knife bar on because if it is not loosened there will not be much play to put the bed knife bar in. What can happen if you don't loosen these bolts at the back is the bed knife will push up against the blades of the reel and can possibly damage the reel's blades when you're trying to hammer it in not thinking about the bed knife that's right against the blades of the reel. I am going to put the bed bar back into the reel. Right now I am going to screw in the bolts that hold the bed bar in place. I used a flathead screwdriver to push against the washer to line up the washer with the bolts as I try to screw it in and of course 
I put the washer in as close as I could so I would just have to push lightly against the washer to line them up. Now I will just tighten the nuts on the top of the reel with the springs, but not too tight because we don't want to wreck the springs that help the bed bar absorb bumps. After this part is done, we'll have finished installing the bed bar. Once we had the bed knife back on the reel, we adjusted the bed knife and the height so that we could test it with some paper to see how sharp our reel's blades are. And they're cutting paper all the way across the bed knife's blades, telling us that the blades have a nice sharp edge. Well, thanks for watching my video on sharpening reels.